Hello there, you sensational cryptonauts. How is everyone doing in this December of 2023? Why not show an article on how to invest in Ethereum in 2023 now that the year is almost over? Why not? What else have I got going on today? Anyway, I used to mine Ethereum on the Ether mine pool using my GPUs, burning a lot of electricity, making a lot of heat, uh, trying not to burn my house down with GPUs. But that was the old days. That was before the dark times. Uh, but anyway, here we go. I'm always curious now, are people making money with Ethereum? Uh, how? So let's just jump into it. All right. They are saying Ethereum has established itself as one of the most valuable tokens available in the market. All right. Yeah, okay. It's popular because you can mine it. I think the miners really supported Ethereum and beefed it up. So anyway, let's get into the background. We'll read this stuff. Some of you may not know it since uh, the switch, and we'll talk about that through this article. Uh, we're all here to learn together. And it's story time with Crypto Jim. So grab some popcorn, grab the dog, and let's go. All right, Ethereum is a decentralized open source blockchain with smart contract functionality, right? It has made improvements on some of the functionality associated with Bitcoin, all right? It is mostly actively used. It is the most actively used blockchain for this reason. And while it may not be as much of a household name as Bitcoin, it has unquestionably become hugely successful. Problem is, uh, you really learn about this stuff when you start mining. You see the devil in the details. The whole Ethereum network is, it's just a pain in the butt. The reason being, if you don't have, oh, let's see, how do you say this? You gotta move your crypto around, right? You gotta pay huge gas fees. I don't know if they still call it gas fees, but that they call them gas fees, network fees, back when I was mining, to move from one mining uh, wallet to another and you'd have to wait, and it was just expensive. Also, there's minimums. Some of these wallets with a th on the ETH network, you have to have a minimum amount to move. And if you wanna move, say, 100 bucks of some ETH coin, there's offshoots from Ethereum, right? Or even Ethereum. You need to have enough to cover the expense of moving that. And sometimes you don't. So there's, if you get the gas fee at a high, you're gonna put in more money to move it than what you have in your wallet. So the money is now just kinda, oh, what's the word? Mm. Orphan, you could say. It's just out there. You own it, but you can't do anything with it. It's almost when the government comes in and locks your accounts. You got it out there, but you can't touch it. You, how are you gonna move it unless you're gonna be stupid enough to put more money into it to move it? So that's my big negative on the whole Ethereum stuff is the network fees. Anyway, it's been around since 2015. Who cares about the history? How to invest in Ethereum, four ways. Yeah, right, there's a, var a variety of ways. Uh, let's see, here are the four prominent ways Ooh, to purchase the token. You can buy Ethereum through an exchange. All right, that's straight out like buying a stock. You can go through Exodus, Electrum I have not heard of, Mycelium, Ledger Nano X, Oh, these are the wallets. I went right to it. Sorry, I screwed that up. There are many of these available. All right, you need to have your own storage facilities when you buy it. Uh, do not keep your stuff on the exchange. Uh, here are the hardware wallets that are compatible with Ethereum. Uh, Exodus is a hardware wallet. It's on your, it's a software wallet on your uh, local PC. Elect uh, Electrum, Ledger Nano X, Trezor Model T, Ledger Nano S. Pro tip. When you're buying these hardware wallets, these physical memory sticks, these ledgers and that, make sure you're getting them right from the manufacturer. You don't want to have a man in the middle of attack where someone you're buying third party and they ship you these ledger nanos, they've compromised them. So when you're storing your crypto on it, they have a way to hack in and take that crypto from you. You got to be careful. Only buy from the manufacturers direct. If you can, just watch the scams out there. You have a lot of money, you have a lot of crypto, and it's the job of these scammers and the banks to take that money and crypto and put it in their wallets. A lot of scam going on, man. It's, it's, it's out of control. Yeah, it's a software wallet. You can also use a software wallet since hardware wallets are expensive. 
for regular trading, a software wallet that is always connected is a better option. But for long-term storage of assets, a cold hardware wallet is generally the best option. You better keep your key phrases around somewhere in a safe and keep that wallet, hardware wallet in a safe where you know it's at, you're gonna lose it. And then you're, what are you gonna do? You lose that physical thing. You gotta keep track. This is, this is money. It may, you know, it goes up, it goes down, it goes sideways, it may do nothing, but it's still currency, uh, not currency, it's money. It's stuff you invested in, it's protected. People lose stuff all the time. They lose their computers that it's on, their laptops, and they're, they're out, they lost it. All right, you can actually buy Ethereum on, ex on exchange. Uh, generally, this will include confirming your identity, like you're going to Coinbase, uh, Gemini, all these exchanges out there, Binance, even uh, Fidelity, you can only buy, uh, there you can only buy Bitcoin, Ethereum on the Fidelity crypto account uh, and exchange. So they, uh, they wanna confirm your identity via procedures that are referred to as KYC, not KFC, that's the chicken people. You wanna know your customer. They wanna know who you are, mainly it's for basically tax purposes. The, the government wants their money. All right, this involves providing suitable documentation which is, includes government issued ID, uh, as well as proof of address. All right, whatever. Next one, you can buy fractions of Ethereum through an exchange. It is not necessary to purchase an entire coin. Yeah, it's like buying stocks, you know? You just, you can buy fractional shares of some stocks in that, or, or, or um, funds, index funds and stuff. Most exchanges will allow purchases in the region of 0.01 Ethereum tokens, which currently amounts to approximately 20 bucks, all right. You can trade Ethereum through a broker. Another option for those intending to invest in Ethereum is to trade ETH via a broker. Most brokers will be available online as a digital service. And it's important to understand that the process associated with the broker is significantly different to that of an exchange. Interesting. Online brokers are therefore extremely popular and are particularly well suited to those investing in cryptocurrencies for the first time. While brokerages used to be relatively rare and were used by regular market participants, this is no longer applies today. Yeah, you got brokers are now popping up. And now there's talking of ETFs coming through. And I think that's the next one. Oh yeah, this is the key here too. Look, you should also, with a broker, you should also ensure that you can access your crypto broker platform 24 seven via desktop and mobile apps. Problem with brokerages and stuff and exchanges, do not keep your crypto on an exchange or on these broker platforms. Pretty much they own it their keys their coins you don't have it you bought it but if you don't have the keys of the coins on your wallet your hard wallet your software wallet guess what not your keys not your coin is such a true statement a saying live by it do your do your transaction move your crypto whatever you're gonna do uh blammo get it off as soon as possible look up blockfi look up voyager boom if you had your stuff on there you're getting barely anything back from that you lost it it's, it's, it's amazing. It's scary times. You got to be really smart with this stuff. Yeah. Be careful. All right. Number four, invest in an Ethereum ETF. Another option for those trading Ethereum is to opt for an ETF, exchange traded fund. These can be used to trade cryptocurrencies through the traditional market. They are also... Uh, they also feature the particularly useful function of collecting several tokens together into a, sing a singular tradable assets. ETFs track these baskets of assets and enable open trading on the stock exchange. They are subject to fluctuations in price during the day as investors buy and sell. It becomes almost like a fund, really. Blockchain ETFs tend to be extremely popular and are an, ex an excellent option to trade Ethereum uh, you can trade Ethereum through as well. So now there's a couple things going on right now. Uh, after the new year, the first quarter, the SEC is supposed to approve some of these Bitcoin ETFs by the big boys, Blah, BlackRock. They own the world, uh, Vanguard, and I think maybe Fidelity have some out there. Once these get approved, and I'm guessing they will, because it's a, it's a good old boy network and we ain't in it. 
So these big old bubbles are gonna protect each other, how to make everyone each rich and uh, you know, why not tag along? And what's gonna happen hopefully with this ETF approval is that there's gonna be conventional adoption. You're gonna get a uh, uh, Billy, Billy Joe, who's got his money in traditional index funds. He's gonna tell, call his broker at Fangar, say, hey, hey, uh, hey, Timmy, put me in some of that Bitcoin ETF. And uh, Timmy's gonna go, yes, sir. And then it's gonna just roll a couple percentage over to that ETF. And then uh, Billy Bob's gonna sit back and go, I got me some Bitcoin, you know, and watch it go up and down, I don't know. Basically, the point is you're going to get the regular Joes, the masses trying to go, oh, I can now easily invest in an ETF versus buying the crypto directly through some of these, uh, not shady, but some of these exchanges where you got to set up accounts, go through this KYC stuff, boom, just go through your broker, get the ETF, set and forget, you know, have them monitor if you need to buy or sell. But uh, yeah, going through Coinbase and all this stuff, you, it's a lot more work for the average person to understand how to do it. And you're paying a lot more fees too. Getting your uh, fiat in there, buying it. Yeah, it's just easier. If they can get this ETF stuff rolling, it's gonna hopefully make mass adoption. We will see. TBD, yet to be determined. All right, that is all I got. I was just curious how to uh, keep you know playing with Ethereum. I also read on here, I don't know why it's not in this article. If you buy Ethereum, you can stake it and get staking rewards. I don't know enough about that. If anyone knows anything about Ethereum staking, since it's gone from proof of work to proof of stake, that's why mining stopped. Uh, let me know where you're doing it, how you're doing it, what's your minimum Ethereum required? Uh, and is it is it actually profitable? Is it passive income for you? Is it like a dividend? Do you own the, do you actually own the Ethereum? Is it on your wallet? and you're staking it or you want some exchange staking it. And if, it, if you're on someone else's platform staking it, I'm not doing that because again, not your keys, not your coins. They could go belly up and then you lost all your Ethereum. And I'm always afraid too, if, you, if something's paying a high dividend, exceptionally high, or paying high rewards like Voyager and BlockFi were doing, be very, very cautious. They will go under, it, it, it's not sustainable. You gotta watch it, it could be a pump and dump. You just gotta be careful when people are paying high rewards to utilize your investment, your coins. Just be careful with that. All right, what do you guys think? Let me know about the uh, proof of stake stuff on Ethereum. Uh, yeah, interesting times. Go forth to great things. I will, uh, I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Out.